At this point, let's introduce a federal law, the Truth in Lending Act, TILA or Reg Z. It was created in 1968 and the main purpose is to protect consumers from predatory lending practices by doing disclosures. So these disclosures, we're either gonna call them the loan estimate, we're gonna call them the HOEPA notice, we're gonna call it the home ownership counseling session. There are disclosures included in this law and it is enforced by the CFPB, the, the, the main regulator over everything that we do in the mortgage industry. Okay, so with that short introduction, Let's talk about TILA or Reg Z. Some people across America call it TILA. It depends on what part of, um, what side of the Mississippi you're on. So Reg Z applies to anyone that offers or extends credit if the following four conditions are met. Number one, the credit's offered to consumers. Would you all agree that a home loan would be to a consumer? Okay, cool. Number two, that the credit is offered regularly. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is your profession and you're going to do this often, I would say that you met that second requirement or condition as well. Number three, the credit is subject to a finance charge, interest. We charge interest at what we do and it must be paid in more than four installments. I don't know about you, but on a mortgage, I think it's gonna take a little bit more than four payments to pay off a mortgage loan. And then last one, the credit is for personal, family, or household purposes. Please don't add to what I've just told you. Please don't say, well, Dave, you know, credit offered to consumers. What if it's an investor? What if it's commercial? What if, people, when we go down the what if forest, a lot of people tend to get lost in the what if forest. So just stay with me that we're talking about personal, we're talking about family, we're talking about consumer, we're not making business loans and we're not doing investment properties and we're not making loans more than five units, which is another point that we need to bring up. Reg Z does not apply to home loans for businesses, commercial, agricultural purposes, and it really only applies to one to four units. So again, five units or more, TILA does not apply. You is, are considered to have regularly offered credit if you extend credit more than 25 times in a calendar year or more than five times for transactions secured by a home. If you're doing this, Hopefully you're gonna do more than five loans in a year or else it may be a little bit difficult to make your payments. It's essential to remember that TILA, this, this umbrella has a lot of provisions that are underneath it. So think of TILA as an umbrella. We talked just for a second about HOEPA, the Home Ownership and Equity Protection Act, which we'll, you know, uh, we'll talk about um, if you're offering a higher cost or a higher price loan, those are both HOEPA, those are under TILA. They, they're down in chapters uh, 32 and 35 of TILA, so you have to go through quite a few chapters before you get to them, but it is there. So higher priced and higher cost, section 35 and section 32 loans are also under TILA. As we continue with this umbrella, uh, qualified mortgages or QMs with the ATR, the ability to repay, LO compensation, which again is how you get paid, they all fall under that TILA umbrella. Now the TILA umbrella also covers other topics, including the definition of an application, which we'll cover. What is an application? When do I have an application? How many pieces of data are included in the application? We're gonna spend some time on advertising because you don't wanna do it wrong. It's a federal law. We'll also in TILA talk about the right of rescission. The right of rescission. If you're doing an adjustable rate mortgage, we'll also talk about the consumer handbook, the CHARM booklet, the consumer handbook on adjustable rate mortgages. And then we'll talk about the TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosure Rule or TRID. Now the Dodd-Frank Act mandated um, certain provisions, another federal law that talked about qualified mortgages, ability to repay, LO compensation. So it's in TILA and the lender 
uh, the company that you work for needs to keep all records of compliance with Reg Z for at least two years. So if you have records that the company doesn't have, make sure they get it. It looks for any kind of false or inaccurate, you know, disclosure information, um, underestimating an APR or failing to comply with Reg Z can have fines up to $5,000 imprisoned for a year or both. Advertising is an important step to drum up business in the mortgage business, especially for you. It can also be a very, very difficult as many laws regulate how you should advertise. TILA is one of those laws. So TILA defines an advertisement as, as you're, you're trying to sell something through any media. So if you are uh, visiting with people inside the industry and you talk about things, that's not considered advertisements. It's when you're advertising to say a borrower, then the rules come into effect. So if you're just working with realtors, that's going to be totally different than talking to a consumer or a borrower. If you advertise specific terms, if you advertise, say, a, a, an interest rate, a finance charge, you also need to include the annual percentage rate or APR, meaning the cost to get that particular interest rate or finance charge. You need to advertise if that APR might increase after the loan is closed. So the ad needs to be super specific on that detail, whether it's a simple annual periodic rate. I mean, how often does it change? What can make it change? It needs to be, it needs to be, your advertising needs to have it, what's the word? More conspicuous. You can't be hiding an APR, you know, in a, in a smaller mice type print where the interest rate is super large. This APR needs to be conspicuous. The borrower needs to be able to see it. It should be some of the biggest font type uh, in whatever it is that you're advertising. If you're using an older technology like newspaper, yeah, on online where you know most of this stuff is gonna go on, it just needs to be very, very prominent. So if you advertise an interest rate, ladies and gentlemen, you must include an annual percentage rate. Again, the cost to get that interest rate. In a mortgage loan, there are credit reports and appraisals and you know just different costs incurred to get the loan. Those costs converted to an interest rate are added to the interest rate that the borrower is paying. And so you have the interest rate and then the APR, which is usually a bigger number. One way to remember this is if you're using any kind of number in your advertising, it will most likely be a trigger term. A trigger term is a requirement to disclose additional information. So a trigger term is a phrase that represents maybe an attractive feature or it motivates the borrower to do something. So some examples of trigger terms would be a 3% down payment, $1,000 down. We offer 100% financing. So if a trigger term appears, then you have to fully disclose everything associated with it. So what is the price of the home? What is the down payment required? What are the total number of payments? What's the monthly payment? What are due dates? What's the APR? How did you get to it? So if you use a number, you have to explain how that number came about. Now, if you're just generally visiting and you're just talking, no numbers, then you're probably gonna be all right, here's some examples. Uh, we offer um, low monthly payments. We have terms to fit almost any budget. Uh, we offer conventional and government financing. So if you're doing a generic term like that, you've not used a trigger term. Now, if you're using an adjustable interest rate, you need to let the borrower know, will that APR increase? Is it, is it um, likely to increase and by how much is it to increase? Now, it's important to remember that it's not required to advertise every single credit plan that is available. But if you're gonna advertise something, you better be able to deliver it. One thing that would be not in compliance with federal law would be bait and switch, where you 
advertise something that you're not really going to honor or you can't really offer. If a borrower asks about a particular credit plan and a cost associated with it, you must disclose the APR. I've said that, what now, five times? The APR needs to be disclosed. It needs to be more prominent than pretty much anything else on that advertisement. It needs to be consistent. Um, it needs to be conspicuous. It needs to be upfront.